Hello and welcome to Yoga with Carolyn. My name is Carolyn. If it's your first time here, welcome. Lovely to have you here. And please consider becoming a subscriber to the channel if you are not already. If it's not your first time here, welcome back. So lovely to practice some more yoga with you. Today's practice is a cozy and restful yin yoga practice to help celebrate Samhain, which is the last of these seasonal celebrations on the wheel of the year. It marks the end of harvest and a celebration of, of endings, of rest, of being, of death. Um, some people who identify as witches or who follow along the wheel of the year, this is their new year. Um, personally, for me, this marks the end of my year until we come into Yule, which is the winter solstice, which I like to identify as the turn of the year. So however you are celebrating this time, if you are arriving and you're like, yes, this is my witch new year, fantastic. If you're like, I don't even know what you're talking about, amazing, this is still gonna be a really cozy and wonderful practice. So put on your super duper comfy clothes, place a blanket on your mat. You don't need the stickiness of your mat today. Grab your bolster, your meditation cushion, and a couple of blocks, and maybe a cozy hot drink, and let's get started. Welcome to Yoga with Carolyn, teaching empaths and sensitive souls just like you how to create a collaborative relationship with your body through cozy, accessible yoga and self-care practices in order to live a life filled with less doing and more being. So happy Samhain or happy Halloween, depending on what you want to call it. <laughs> so I'm not going to talk too much about what Samhain is because I am a strong believer in um, embodying the themes and embodying the lessons through the actual practice. Um, but just in terms of themes that are found around this time, if you are watching this, as we're moving through Samhain here in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, themes of, of death, of endings, and also of rest, um, of kind of laying down the effort. If you were to associate the wheel of the year to the cycle of the moon, this time is associated with the dark moon, which is the last phase in the lunar cycle. And themes within the dark moon are really just of that, of rest, of, of being of leaning into just kind of experiencing whatever you're experiencing and really feeling it so that then you can um, help use that to guide whatever will come next, right? So same thing happening around this time is we're moving through Samhain. This will guide us into Yule, which is the winter solstice, which I like to view as the turn of the year, but maybe you like to view this as the turn of the year, right? So you get to really bring your own essence to this practice. And why do we move through seasonal rituals? Well, I'm a believer that if you're a feeler, you are, are um, in tune with the energetics that are found around the seasons. And so why not lean into that and actually learn more about that so that you can learn more about the external rhythms in order to tune into your own internal rhythms and go from there and play around with that and notice how that might serve you in your life. Okay, so... <laughs> You're going to start in a comfortable seat, please. So maybe placing a meditation cushion underneath of your sit bones. And we're going to be transitioning pretty much right away into a seated forward fold. So you can make sure that you'll have your props in front of you for that. Bring yourself into your seat. Place your hands wherever is comfortable. Let the spine lengthen, let the shoulders drop. Let the eyes close if that feels good. Let's see if we can get busy with resting today. Allow your breath to become part of your awareness here. As you deepen and you lengthen the breath, you notice your awareness dive in a bit deeper. 
you turn inwards and you offer yourself some well-deserved attention and care. Soften your eyebrows, soften your jaw. Let's take three releasing breaths together. Place one hand on your belly, one hand on your heart. Take an inhale to fill up the entirety of your torso into the palms of your hands. Open the mouth, exhale, let it go. Watch as your hands fall. Two more like that. Inhale, there's an expansion, an opening. Exhale, there's a softening, a turning in, an arriving. One last one, inhale. of the mouth, what are you letting go of here? Really softly, blink the eyes open so that you can transition into your forward fold. So you'll extend into the legs. I'm gonna turn so that I'm showing you my side view here, but you can stay exactly as you are. I'm gonna offer you a few different options, modifications, variations to this posture so that your body feels really supported so that you can really truly let go in this posture. So you bring that straightness into your legs. The quote traditional version of this posture is legs really glued towards each other and then you just come forward and down. But there's so many different things that you might feel within this version of the posture. One thing that you might feel is that you feel like you don't have quite enough space to come forward. So in that case, widen the position of your legs as wide as will create lots of space for the front line of your body to come forward and down. The other thing that might happen is that you don't quite feel like your low back loves this version of the posture. So the two different ways that you can modify for that would be bringing a generous bend into the legs that then the torso gets to just drape down on the thighs, supporting your low back. And then as the, the time will lapse, you can slowly, 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 slowly straighten into the legs. Another option would be to place a bolster underneath of your knees. This is one of my favorite versions when I'm feeling like I want it to be extra, extra cozy. And then you can grab your blocks and place your blocks in whatever structure, whatever building, whatever height to help support your forehead. Or you can place the blocks underneath of your forearms if that's what you would rather and just let your head drop. If none of those versions of the posture feel supportive for you, some of the students that come to my classes like to actually bring themselves up onto a chair you can come onto the edge of the couch or the bed or whatever and actually do this posture seated. So extending the legs forward as wide as is comfortable and then just draping down forward over the chair. So lots of options. <laughs> so once you've found the option that works for you, you'll shift and shimmy so that everything feels good, everything feels supported. And then we'll transition into the stillness of the posture. You can turn the palms of your hands up towards the sky. Let the eyes close. As you let your body experience the energy found around this time of bringing things to an end. Cultivating gratitude for the blessings that you have found this year. Of laying down the swords of effort and 
inviting in the softness of rest, of being. All of these energies, these elements are supportive to help soothe the nervous system. Help restore your energy sources. It is unsustainable to be doing all the time. So let's recoup. Let's hit the pause button. And just be for a while. You'll take one more inhale as you are from the base of your tailbone to the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Inhale. Exhale, soften into the space created. Let go, let go, let go. And then use that heaviness. Move really like sluggishly here. <laughs> As you use the hands connected to the floor, keep the eyes closed so you can experience the ending of this posture. Once you get to the top, pause, notice, receive, release. And then softly opening up into the eyes. Move the blocks, move the props out of the way just so that you can find a little bit of kind of counter stretching and counter movement here. A nice counter pose would be to extend the hands behind you, straighten into the legs. We've done this one before. If you've been here with me for a little while, allow the heart to shine up toward the sky. Maybe there's a bit of twisting here, wiggling here. Let your body really guide you through whatever will feel good to help release that posture. And then we'll transition from here to come into a side body stretch. So coming into kind of like a restorative version of a side body stretch. So you will turn towards the long edge of your mat and bring the bolster onto the right side of your body. So probably the bolster is behind you. And then you'll position um, a pillow or a block, a little bit of space in between the bolster and that second prop. And then from here, you've got your legs bent, your knees are either stacked on top of each other or there's like a little bit of space in between. And you're gonna be draping the right side of your waist onto this bolster. And then your head is gonna land on that second prop. So draping down so that the bolster lands into the smallest part of your waist. Extend the right arm in front of you with the palm open towards the sky. 
shift shimmy adjust so that you feel really supported here on the props and then options <laughs> there's always options so you can keep the legs as they are or you can extend into the legs you stack the legs on top of each other you can keep the left arm just by your side if there's already a lot of sensation happening in the right side of the waist if you want to kind of continue the extension happening on the left side reach the left arm up overhead and then just rest the arm on your head kind of like on your ear bring the eyes to a close and this is it this is your posture you're going to be here for not too too long we'll be here for about a minute and a half Let your breath help create that space as well as that softening. Place the left hand on the bolster or the floor. Press into the left hand to bring yourself up to seated. And we're, we're here for like the end, right? The death of the posture. So before we rush on to the next shape, just bring yourself into seated. Doesn't matter which direction you're facing, like diagonally, whatever, you don't even know. Bring yourself into seated. Find some neutrality in your torso. Breathe. <laughs> Remember to breathe. <sighs> and then if you want to move, you can move here. There might be some like side to side or twisty twist stuff that wants to be explored. And then you'll come into the posture on the other side. So I'm going to flip my bolster and stuff over towards the other side, but you could literally just turn towards the left. I just want to make sure I'm not going to be facing away from you. Once you've got the prop set up, if you move them, or if you turn around, you don't have to move them. Amazing. You just set your lower part of your body up and then bring the left side of your waist down onto the bolster. Place your head down on the cushion, extend into that left arm. A large majority of people <clears throat> um, lack symmetry in their pelvis. It's just, it's just normal, it's natural. Um, so if you come into the posture on this side and you're like, whoa, what's going on here? And that's okay, just adjust accordingly. Find a version of the posture that'll help support this side, however this side feels. A reminder of the options, you can keep the legs as they are, you can straighten them, you can keep the right arm as it is, or you can extend the right arm up overhead, draping the right arm on your head. And then the eyes close. And you let yourself get carried back into that, that sense of being, of the posture, of the practice. That sense of rest. One of the 
things that I really love about the lessons of this time is that I sometimes think that we need to earn the right to not be doing something all the time. We need to earn the right to rest. That it's sometimes viewed as something indulgent. That if we look at the cycles found within the seasons and the moon and just the nature, that it offers us this beautiful loving reminder that it's actually not something you need to earn, but something that you have a right to just inherently by being you, that it's necessary. That you are worthy of this, of this care, of this rest, of this laying down the effort. You are worthy of this simply because you are. Placing the right palm of the hand onto the bolster, press into the bolster as you lift yourself back up. back into just neutrality I don't know why that's the word that keeps coming to mind but just <laughs> coming into just oh. the movement your body is calling for here find that movement and we've got one last posture before a cozy corpse pose <laughs> so the last posture you'll be finding is waterfall pose using the bolster so bringing yourself onto your back with your bolster by your side And then once you make your way onto your back, your body might really be craving some movement in the low back, especially after we started the practice in that forward fold. So move a little bit here if you'd like to, or you might just wanna come into constructive rest, constructive rest being legs bent, soles of the feet on the floor, allowing some slack to come into your hip flexors. And then you'll grab hold of your bolster. You'll press the soles of the feet into the floor and you'll shift the bolster underneath of your body, laying your, your sacrum down onto the bolster. And then I usually find, if you're familiar with supportive bridge and if you've been practicing with me for a little while, you are very familiar with this posture. <laughs> So I usually find that to come into waterfall, I usually have to shimmy my hips down a bit so that the bolster lands a little bit higher than it would in just traditional supported bridge. So then when you extend the legs up towards the sky, so go ahead and extend the legs up towards the sky, um, there's less effort required to hold the legs up. And it's so funny, even as I say that, right? When I say there's less effort required, there's this part of me in my mind that goes, don't say that. People are going to think that you're lazy because you're always looking for the version of the posture that requires the least amount of effort. Um, and isn't that funny how our minds do that? How we're always convinced that if you choose the, the version of something that is a little bit more simple, more ease-filled, that it means that it's just not as good, <laughs> that if you didn't work hard for it, that it's not as rewarding or deserving. So just something to explore, contemplate on, right? Is what if it were easeful? What if I could choose the option where it felt a bit more simple, where there was less 
doing required and that it felt a bit more like I was just being throughout the experience instead of doing so much. Uh, close the eyes. Let the weight of the body pool into the pelvis. This posture is a really beautiful one to help invite in a sense of rest and relaxation. You can place your hands on your belly as you just watch your breath move in and out. Soften the face. Watch, watch this release. Let's do this really slowly, because okay, we're in no rush. Take an inhale here, all the way up to the soles of your feet. As you exhale, you'll slowly just letting gravity do its thing. Let the knees fall in towards your chest. Feel the weight of your legs and the torso here. Comfort here, like as if you're offering yourself a weighted blanket. And then you'll place the soles of the feet onto the floor. And stay with this transition, stay with this release. I love this transition. <laughs> I always feel like I'm like, like a pro <laughs> at resting. <laughs> So once the soles of the feet connect to the floor, press into the feet, lift the hips up, place your hands on the bolster, slide or roll the bolster down, probably just like one roll, bring the hips down, extend into the legs, bam, your bolster lands right behind your knees or right kind of at the base of the back of your thighs. You are ready for corpse pose, ready for shavasana. Grab an extra blanket if you'd like to, to cover your body, grab an eye pillow, whatever you need here, lovely. Legs extend long, arms extend out as wide as they wanna go here with the palms open towards the sky. You scoop the shoulder blades under. If there's one posture that really embodies death, endings, it's this one. So 
Allow yourself to just let go, to rest and to simply be for a little while.
softly bringing the awareness back into the body. Deepen your breath. Wiggle in the fingers and the toes. Extend the arms up overhead, stretch from fingertips all the way down into the soles of your feet. Bring the knees in towards the chest, hug them in, rock from side to side. Eventually bringing yourself onto the right side of the body using your right arm as a pillow. It's not by accident that in your practice, after a corpse pose, you come into fetal position. Because when we let things end, when we let things die, we create space for new, new life, new experiences, new dreams, new creations, new versions of you. Press into the floor, bring yourself up into seated. Bring the hands into prayer, bow the head slightly. We end in this posture always in order to invite in a sense of gratitude a sense of reverence for not only the time that you set aside to do something for you to celebrate this seasonal transition, but also to cultivate gratitude for this practice that's been passed down from thousands of years. Thank you to those who have passed down this knowledge, this practice in order for you and I to be able to soak up its lessons. I'll take one more inhale here. Exhale at the mouth, let it go. Softly open up into the eyes. Thank you so much for sharing this, this practice, this time with me. I hope that you have a really restful Samhain or a really um, restful Halloween. Enjoy spooky season. <laughs> If you enjoyed today's practice, the best way to show your support is to like the video as well as comment below. I know that it sounds like a little thing and I know that you probably want to go on with the rest of your day, but doing just those two tiny things really help um, support this channel so that more people can actually come to this space and gain the coziness from this community, right? That's what we want. We just want more cozy in the world. <laughs> so I really appreciate it if you can take just a few moments to do that. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you again very soon.